Yo, what is going on guys? It is Chris and today I am going to be doing uh, another controller review. Now, if you guys have been paying attention to my videos, um, I did talk about how I sent my Scuff Vantage back to Scuff to get the, you know, the issues with the Dead Zones fixed so they installed their firmware update for their controllers. And I mentioned how I sent my controller back about a week before they release their software available for anybody who has a Windows 10 computer to download. And unfortunately for me, my controller already got some scuff and I had to wait about two weeks for them to get that back to me. So while I was waiting for that, I kind of thought to myself, is there another controller that I can try and pick up to sort of like test and see how I feel about it to see if this would work as sort of a replacement for my Scuff Vantage and even my Scuff Impact. And lo and behold, thanks to Amazon, I was able to pick up this Razer Rise U Tournament Edition controller for PlayStation 4 and for PC. Now, there's two different versions of this controller. This is the Tournament Edition, which is a $170. And then there's the Rise U Ultimate Edition, which has a different stick layout. It's lined up similar to how the uh, DualShock 4 controller is and it also has like a chroma ring around it and a different audio options that's $200 and that's not available in the US yet this was and this is only $170 so I thought you know I can pick this up on Amazon I have Amazon Prime by the way if you guys have Twitch Prime use it on somebody they just, just use it doesn't matter um, and you know, I got this in like two days and I was able to test it out and see how I feel about it. So this video is going to be a little bit different. I My Scuff Vantage and my Scuff Impact comparison video, I tried to edit it a little bit to try to like give some more like professional uh, video overview. For this video, I wanted to try something a little bit different and kind of just talk about the controller and talk about my experiences it, with it. Um, just how I felt about using it. So the first thing that I wanted to get into with using this controller is the buttons that the programmable buttons that basically uh, map to your four face buttons. Now they're 100% remappable and they're remappable with an iOS or an Android app. There's nothing on your computer that you can use unfortunately, which I kind of don't like because I sort of just prefer being able to plug something into my computer and edit stuff that way as opposed to using a mobile app. But the mobile app worked. I was able to program my buttons. So I have my X on this, on this paddle. I call it, I don't really call these paddles. They're more like buttons. They're a little bit more solid, but they're in a, there's a sizable enough to where they could be considered a paddle. But I'll usually try to refer to them as buttons because they feel more like buttons. So I had that set to X, circle, and for the top two I had uh, square and triangle. And that's usually how I work with my uh, scuffs. And the sort of difference with this is that instead of having all four buttons be on the back of the controller, you have two buttons on the back of the controller and then two buttons right next to the triggers. Now. Over about a day of play, I was able to get used to having the buttons be here as opposed to being on the back. I will say that there's some instances where having the buttons on the like the top next to the triggers aren't as um, I don't I don't prefer them as much as having them on the back of the controller. Mainly because when I have them on the back of the controller, the way I hold my controller. Um, my two middle fingers are usually sitting more towards the inside of the controller and my two ring fingers are sitting more to the outside of the controller and that's where they're touching the buttons. Um, with this controller, I find myself just gripping it um, and having my middle fingers uh, gripping the buttons that way and that's the easiest way for me to use this controller and use its buttons. Um, over time playing, I find it to get a little bit uncomfortable, mainly with my left hand and I find that's due to the way that the button or the thumbsticks are laid out because it's uh, slightly offset compared to the regular DualShock 4 controller 
I find that the way that I grip my controller is a little bit differently. Um, it's not um, the same for both hands just because the thumbsticks are in different positions. So it's, it's, it's something that I experience. I don't know if anybody else sort of experiences that if they're using, say, like an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. But that's just something that I notice when I'm using it. And it sort of gives me a feel to one of the other controllers that I've used before, uh, the Nakon Revolution Pro controller, um, which is similar to this, except these buttons on the back of that controller had uh, two different options that it had. So it basically acted as two buttons, but it only had like one switch that activated both of them. Um, and the issue that I had with that controller was the way that the grips were designed, it was a little sharper than this. Like this controller has a smoother transition from the trigger to the actual grips. And while I like this a lot better than on the Nakon controller, which is really uncomfortable to use for me, um, I do still find times where I'm using this and it starts to get really uncomfortable in my left hand um, over prolonged use of play. So that's something that I've been, been experiencing. But overall, I think with using this controller, it reminds me a little bit more of the Xbox One's controller and its feel. And I think that controller was probably one of the more comfortable controllers for me to use personally. So this is a little closer to an Xbox One controller uh, that just works on PlayStation 4. Now with that said, the way that this works with PlayStation 4 is you have the option, to see if I can just show you right here. So on the back, there's a switch. And if I can get that to focus, so there's three different options. And I don't think I'm gonna get this to focus. Unfortunately, let me see. There we go. So you have three different options. You can use it in Bluetooth mode on your PS4. You can also use it on Bluetooth mode on PC, which I will get to in a little bit. And for either way, you can use it uh, wired. Um, what I will say is if you're going for purely performance, wired is the way to go. Um, there is a lot less delay or input delay in wired mode than in wireless mode. Um, and that's just how it is. So, um, with that said, I did want to talk about the wireless functionality and I kind of want to save that for more towards the end when I get into what I really like, and what I really dislike about this controller. So getting into the things that I like about this controller again, like I like the way that it feels in the hand. It's a little big, but for me, like I have big hands, so, um, it's more comfortable in my hand than say like a regular DualShock 4, which is a pretty small controller compared to this. Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing that I like about this controller are the trigger stops. Now the thing about these trigger stops are, uh, unlike some other trigger stops where let's say, um, oh, here, I'm just gonna show you this. While I was speaking about my scuff vantage, I did end up getting this controller back. Um, it came back to me about two days ago, which was gave me a little bit more time to test out and see how this goes. But with like the Scuff Vantis controller and with other controllers, so there's an actual thing that you would move to just change the trigger stops. So those are um, those are more mechanical switches that allow you to um, decrease your trigger pull. And the way that it works is the controller only needs a certain amount of trigger pull to actuate um, a, f a trigger. Um, that doesn't always work in certain racing games where it requires you to use the entire pull of the trigger to basically act as a gas pedal. And with the Raiju controller, what I notice is that these switches, once they're turned on, not only do they shorten the amount of trigger pull that you need to actuate the buttons, but it actually changes the amount of trigger pull required to have a full trigger pull. So in the case of, let's just say, I take the trigger stop off, that's a half a pull, and then that's a full trigger pull, and that's how it actuates on the game. With a traditional trigger stop, this would, it would stop here, but that would still only be half a trigger pull. 
with the way that this controller works, it shortens that in half. So this is now half a trigger pull, and then the, all the way in is a full trigger pull, but you still have the short responsiveness of the trigger stops, which I don't know if any other controller has done it before. If Razer has done it in their previous controllers, then I have no idea why no other controller creator has really sort of picked up on it and tried to figure out how to do that. But that's a pretty good idea for trigger stops. And I actually, even though I don't really use the trigger stops as much, I do say that I like being able to use the trigger stops and not have to switch off of using them when I'm using like a different, like a racing game. I think the best example I can give for this is when you're playing Destiny 2. Um, most of the time, you're in first person mode, you're able to shoot your guns and everything, but you can also pull out your Sparrow, and accelerating with the Sparrow works like you're playing a racing game, and if you have a trigger stop, like a traditional trigger stop, then it doesn't actuate the, uh, the acceleration on the Sparrow. So, that's a situation, that's like a really narrow situation where that sort of helps, but since I play Destiny 2 a lot, um, that sort of appreciated for me. So that's probably one of the best features on the controller besides just the programmable buttons. The other thing I didn't really get into are the actual physical buttons. Um, the feel of it, um, Razer describes it as a mechanical tactile, I believe. So basically it's supposed to mimic a mechanical keyboard, like right here, I have a mechanical keyboard, but that's a, those are silent key switches. And if I, if you can pick, if this picks up on the microphone, these switches have like that mechanical feel to it. So they're not mushy like the regular DualShock 4 controller. So they're a little bit more tactile. So if you do use those buttons a lot, I find myself trying to use the uh, programmable buttons as much as possible, but then when you go to use those, it is a nice feature to have um, to have those buttons feel more mechanical. And actually, I think that extends to the touchpad as well. That button feels like it's more of like a mechanical button, which I really like that. You know, Razer um, kind of taking their, uh, their features from their keyboards and mice and adding those to their controllers is pretty good thing to see. Um, but now getting into the things that I've disliked about this controller, and the first thing that I want to really talk about are the thumbsticks. Now, um, this is going to open up a whole can of worms, um, but talking about how the Vantage had like issues with dead zones um, and things like that. And while I don't think that the thumbsticks on the Rise Your Tournament Edition or the Ultimate Edition, they're pretty much the same, but I don't think they have that much of a dead zone. So like how the Skiff Vantage had more of a dead zone in some of their controllers than they should have. But I do notice when I'm playing in games that it feels like there's a little bit more force that's required to move these thumbsticks. So maybe there's a little bit more tension on the thumbsticks than there is on the Skiff Vantage and the DualShock 4 controller. Um, these are also a slightly bit taller than the uh, than the Scuffs controller thumbsticks. Um, if you're looking at a DualShock 4, this is obviously going to be a lot taller than those thumbsticks. So that's something if you're coming from a regular DualShock 4 controller, that's something to keep in mind. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is something that I've noticed like early on in my controller testing and I haven't had it come back since is I've had issues of like really slow turns and I don't know why that happened. For a second I thought it was due to the uh, due to the trigger stops and the way that it shortens the trigger pull mechanism. I think it might have had something to like ended up messing with the controller itself, but I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, why that really happened. So I haven't had it happen since I started using the controller about two weeks ago. So in my, my first two days of playing with the controller, I've had that issue. I can say as of then, I haven't had an issue with this at all. And I've been using this for 
a little over two weeks now, but that is something that I've noted. And I did install the new firmware for this controller. Razer did end up releasing new firmware for this controller. This controller released around like the same time as the Vantage, and this controller was having issues with like slow turns with the thumbsticks. So that's something um, that I've noticed, but I haven't had issue since but i thought it was something that i would mention for transparency is something that i've had happen with this controller but overall if i had to sort of rate this controller i would say that for the money that i paid for it considering uh the features that i get having a controller that's both wired and wireless i think that this was worth the money and if you're looking for a pro controller and you know you might not want to go the route of getting a scuff you might not want to do that um this is an alternative that you can go with so i think what i will do and not what i will do i know i will do is i have the raiju i have the vantage and i still have my good old year old scuff impact which I cannot for the life of me stop calling the impact advantage and advantage impact but I will be releasing a video that will be like my ultimate comparison video between the three controllers and sort of rating um, my controller that I would pick if I had only one of these controllers to go with so look out for that video and I'm also going to be doing a video with a short update on the Vantage uh, and how I feel about that controller after the scuff update. And just a quick note, probably gonna be a more positive video because of the past few days of using the Vantage, I really like the controller now with the issues pretty much fixed. So if you were hoping that the controller still sucked and you could still bash scuff for it, I'm sorry, you're probably not going to be looking forward to that video, but that video will be going up after this one, but uh, if you stuck around for the end of this video, I appreciate it. Feel free to leave a like and comment down below what you think about the Razor Rise U Tournament Edition, and if it's something that you think you would consider if you were getting a Pro Control free PS4. So anyways, this is Chris, and I'll see you later.